I became aware of my sexuality at a very young age, um, at the age of about 11, 12 maybe. Um, but I actually had, it's really funny, I actually had a girlfriend when I was 16 and then um, through that uh, relationship I understood that I was actually a gay, a queer man and that, or individual, and I chose that I wanted to be with a man. Um, I think at that age I learned a lot about relationships actually, and like, for starters I learned that love doesn't come in the form of um, sexual intimacy straight away, like, I loved the woman that I was with because it was her and I loved her. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to be with that person. You can love them in a very different way, and we're still best friends, and I talk to her almost every day. Um, and if we need to cry or we need to be upset, we need to get angry, we call each other. Um, she's literally my best friend and always has been uh, for like eight years now. Um, growing up, I actually grew up with two mums, so I never actually had to come out. My parents don't really believe in coming out, um, uh, but it's a constant conversation with my parents about nature or nurture, whether or not I'm gay because of my parents being gay, or whether or not I chose to do it, or whether or not I was born gay. I think it's a really strange question, or interesting question, because a part of me feels like you do make the choice to understand yourself better. I don't think you can choose to be queer or gay. I, th I think everyone is actually queer, and I think a lot of people are simply suppressed. I think, in fact, this might sound controversial, but I believe a lot of like heterosexual people are also queer in their own way. Um, it's just a matter of facilitating that need to explore, the, the desire to explore yourself and your fetishes, your kinks, your wants, your needs. Um, a part of me feels like I became gay with my parents, but in the same breath, like I've always known I was, and, and I feel like being with the parents I have, being in the environment I've been given, like London, I'm allowed to explore that and I've been allowed to like flourish, I feel more in myself. I think that sometimes pornography can give like quite an unrealistic um, depiction of what sex is and also um, one that is quite narrow. You know, like apart from like a lot of a lot of the porn that's out there which is I think targeted towards men mostly. You know you know how like POV of, of, of the man and the woman, but there's not much, which is the reverse. And then maybe the, the people in, in the film, they behave and act in a certain way, and then people start to think, oh yeah, that's how sex is, that's how sex should be, and then they start to expect that out of sex, like in real life, and then maybe they, they, they you know, they kind of like um, are surprised when it's not like that, because it's not like that, that's, that's fiction. Um, then that can create I think ideas that yeah, that maybe aren't true and that you should not, you know, like come to expect or come to think that that's the reality of it or like that's not how every woman behaves, that's not what every woman likes, you, you know, like that's, that's not what happens all the time, that can happen, you know, you know how you have those videos where like maybe because there's a lot where like the man just comes into someone's face like that and and it's just a given in the video that in the narrative that like yeah she fucking loves it she loves she that's that's what she wants it's like what if that's not what she wants you know because many times it's not what she wants so yes i definitely uh discuss about you know how we how good the sex was uh with my partner or not uh because one you need to know what your partner likes <laughs> like you know i always ask the people like oh what do you like like you know or after even like what do you like or how was the sex like was it good you know you gotta know this stuff because you're having sex like with a person so you need to know if you pleasured the the, the person or not so i always ask if you know like do you like this what do you like and sometimes they answer me with i don't know and this gets me worried i'm like so what do you mean you don't know like and they're like oh no one asked me that and i was like why not 
why doesn't no anybody ask you what you like that that's weird man like that's not communication at all I don't think sexuality really changes I just think that people discover it like they discover like it's how when you're like really young you don't know about the flavors and taste of food you are discovering it and then you find that you like certain things more than others um, you know if, if the amount of people that go off to university for example and they're maybe it's out of their hometown it's in a new place with new people and then suddenly either their gender identity changes or their sexuality changes or how they view their sexuality changes and it's not because it's false or because um, they're, they're, they're putting it on it, it's simply because it, it, it fluctuates all the time and there's a lot of people, you know, that kind of, they don't know things about themselves until very late in life. And it's not because that they were, maybe it was subconscious, I don't know, but I, I'm sure not all of the time it's something that they're hiding. It's just a case of it, it being very um, fluid. I'm not gonna lie, yeah, a lot of Chinese young people are sort of influenced by Japanese porn so they're going to like BDSM like, and like some raking stuff which is not good and also there's a trend of people are getting obsessed with people are, like girls who look like really really skinny and really really pale and who looks like a kid I really hate this kind of like beauty trend and just force women to like act like like act childish and so on. Uh, yeah, I think abortion should be free and legal everywhere. It, it's alright because if it's not like legal or free, people are gonna still do it but in dangerous ways and it's really important and like most of the time abortions like they come because people don't have access to birth control and stuff or or just because they didn't want a child and and they should, people should be able to get an abortion and uh, yeah I think birth control is really important and I think society puts so much pressure on women for on being like women should be on birth control and stuff but I think this should make a birth control for men because yeah like a woman can in one year a woman can get pregnant once and a man can, it can fucking make every woman on earth pregnant, you know what I mean? Um, I do think you let men win if you let your guard up way too much. Because like, if you forbid yourself from doing things because you're scared that something gonna happen to you, you, you let them win. Like, uh, whatever you do, uh, if a man wants to assault you, he's gonna do it anyway. So yeah, and it won't be your fault. Yeah, yeah. so like, you know, I, I do feel safe. Yeah, I, I feel safe as well, but like, for example, like, um, when it's dark outside, like, I always walk like on the main road where there's lights and sometimes at night um, I listen to music but like I used to listen to music on my airpods but now I because like I walk um, I use my, my my earphones with uh, wires so people can see I'm listening to music because like if you have airpods you can hide it with your hair and like if someone like tries to, to talk to you or something like I use my wired uh, earphones so like, they can see I'm listening to music and I'm not ignoring them that makes me feel safe kind of yeah. okay. so like, people don't think I'm ignoring them or something so yeah, and um, yeah, in London I feel safe, but for example in France I don't feel safe at all because um, for example Paris compared to London is so Paris is so sketchy. Paris is so sketchy. It's so, sketchy. It's so unsafe as a woman. It is. Like, um, yeah, like in London, like I don't know, I, I don't know why I feel more safe in London, but in Paris it's just so common for people to be sexually assaulted or cut or yeah. I don't know why. I, but yeah, it's like in uh, France, it's so much more common. Like, yeah, like I've like, had it happen more in France than in London. Yeah, it's like you know, it's like uh, you know, being scared of like being sexually assaulted or things like that. Or like, you know, even in Paris, for example, like I'm always scared that I'm gonna get my phone stolen. I I don't have that feel in London. Yeah. You know? Or it's like you know, when I walk late at night in London, I don't, I'm not scared. Yeah. But in Paris, I'm scared. I don't. When I'm in Spain, I I can't do shit. Like I don't know what to do. I'm bored. I, I get need, bored. Like. like People like, are bullies. Yeah, why, and at why the end, have they? Yeah, why have people around if they're gonna be like that? You know, that's why I get bored. Cause I wanna leave this country and I wanna go back to London. You know, back home. Yeah, like 
the the way they think uh, even uh, yeah like I said we they think that we are strange and I don't know for what reason they think that probably because back in the day they thought that a man or and a man can't be together uh, because of some weird like Christian Christianity or Catholic shit you know what I mean like and I feel like in my generation at least everyone is more like well I'm just gonna be me and mm -hmm. try to find myself mm -hmm. and people are way more open in that sense yeah. like also everyone has kind of like a thing with labels and yeah. they don't like it yeah so they go more like with what feels right at the moment mm -hmm. and so many of us mm -hmm. by the way we grew up with technology as mm -hmm. you say we have very similar experiences and also people are able to find the same experience with someone from across the globe and be like okay i'm not the only one yeah and this means that you know mm -hmm. i'm being myself so i'm gonna carry on being myself mm -hmm. i'm so glad my parents never gave me the talk we never had it and i feel so lucky because i feel like that would have been really embarrassing and i really hate being embarrassed so i'm just really glad it didn't happen and um you know i just figured everything out on my own and i'm really glad it happened the way it did because um I would not want my parents to, to teach me about sex. I think it's something you have to learn by yourself and not have someone tell you this is how you do this and do that. You just have to figure things out on your own, in my opinion. Hmm. This is difficult. It's a difficult answer because so much has changed from when they were my age to now. Like, you also have to think about what was happening at the time. And so much could have been different if the internet was around. Like, I know that it's kind of irrelevant to sexuality, but for example, wars, like the Vietnam War, like the amount of propaganda that was going around that people had to believe, could that have been different if the internet was around? And articles were being released from all kind of, all sides of the spectrum and from all walks of life. Um, and so, how much could have been changed if the internet had been around for longer than it had been. Um, so I think it's an impossible, impossible thing to say. I'd like to think so. Um, but, but also even now there are people that are ignorant. There are people that choose to not learn. They have all the, the access to education and knowledge that they could possibly want for free. But, you know it's easy to consume it's not like academic text it's not like you have to go to university you can just google it and it's there and they still choose not to so I think regardless it, it it's kind of it depends on your the society the, the the small kind of subculture that you're raised in some people break free from that some people don't guys will ask me how much I weigh, guys will ask me how tall I am, I think this might be slightly controversial but I think gay men are actually the most judgmental, um, they have a very specific set idea of who they want to have sex with and they often go on like a hunt for this idealistic person they want to have sex with. And yeah, like my auntie got closer to me and shit, and I was like, yeah, I lost my virginity to this person, blah blah blah. And she's like, oh really? Like, and then like, she, since like now she's been more helpful about like sexual stuff, like what to use. She told me that I should be using lube like a lot when I'm having sex, because I might like break a skin that is under there, blah blah blah. You know, it's, she's been very helpful there, but before like even education in schools so fucking shit oh my god the only thing that i learned in sex education yeah when i was in secondary was how to put a condom on a fucking dildo Every, everybody should have the freedom to to explore to do whatever they want to to um yeah because it can be a great thing it's like i hate it when people like stop saying like sex is bad you know, teach people how to do it um, responsibly. Because they are going to do it. And if you suppress, if you suppress that desire, if you suppress that 
uh, you know, like impulse, if you have it, then it might be worse. Like it might, it might manifest itself in a, in a more perverse way. So yes, of course, everybody should have freedom to, to explore that side of them. It can be great. Yeah.